In this video, we're gonna dive into the wonderful world of reverb and discuss the difference between amp reverb and standalone reverb units. Coming up. So I've gotten a lot of questions regarding the use of amp reverb versus a standalone reverb unit like a pedal or a spring reverb. And I wanted to discuss the differences, specifically spring reverb and a Fender amp versus a standalone Fender reverb unit. So how does a spring reverb work? A spring reverb unit is really just a small amplifier that sends a guitar signal through a tube circuit and then to a small output transformer. From there, it goes to a spring tank where the signal vibrates the springs and is then picked up by a transducer at the opposite end. So which came first? So in 1961, Fender released the Fender Reverb Unit, which was a standalone reverb tank. They made these until 1966 and reissued them in the mid-90s. In 1963, Fender released the first amplifier that incorporated onboard reverb. This was the Fender Vibe Reverb, which was a 40-watt combo amplifier. So what's the difference? Well, with a standalone reverb unit, you're basically plugging in your guitar directly into the reverb unit and then going into the front of the amplifier. So your signal is actually passing through a tube circuit before it hits the amplifier tube circuit. The Fender reverb unit has more tonal flexibility over amp reverb. The standalone reverb unit has three knobs to control the reverb sound. There's dwell, mix, and tone. On the amp, you're only limited to one knob, which basically controls the mix. Sonically, they're very different. To me, in-amp reverb sounds a little bit darker. <laughs> It kind of envelops the guitar sound in like a lush reverb. The standalone reverb unit, on the other hand, since it gives you a little bit more control tonally, it's a little more present and in your face and can be more dynamic. So let's plug into both and listen to the difference. I'm plugging in my Telecaster directly into the amp. The amp I'm using today is a new Fender 68 Custom Vibrolux reverb. And I have the reverb set at five. So let's hear how it sounds. It's a little bit darker and more in the background. I usually like to use amp reverb if I'm playing jazz in a club or anything where I want to create a little bit of background space. Let's listen to the range of the reverb on the amp. I'm gonna start at zero and slowly work my way up to 10. So now I'm going to turn down the volume knob on my guitar so we can see how the amp reacts to that. Let's plug into the standalone Fender Reverb unit now. Okay, so I have all the knobs set at six, which is kind of the starting point for that really drippy surf sound. So here it is. If 
you listen closely, it almost sounds percussive and echo-like. I'm gonna turn down the knobs a little bit to get a little more subdued sound. Something that I would use for like West Coast blues. I'm gonna twiddle around the knobs so you can hear the range of what they all do. I'm just gonna start with the dwell knob on zero and then go up from there. Let's play with the mix knob. Now we'll play with the tone knob. You can hear how dark the reverb trail is. It's almost overdriving the uh, the front of the amp. So now I'm going to go back to my basic settings on the reverb and play around with the volume knob on my guitar as well as dig in a little bit so you can hear how it affects the reverb dynamically. Thank you. 
If you like this video, let me know down in the comments. Click the thumbs up, share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe for more gear demos, lesson videos, and music-related vlogs. Thanks again for watching. See you guys later.